first story. OP caught her blind bill perving on her, and her husband's excused his behavior, saying he was blind, and he too had some unmet needs. She is disgusted and done with this relationship. I'm just so hurt. Things were going well until an incident happened with his brother. Every day I see his brother, and I just get this pain in my chest. Sometimes I break down at work in the bathroom. I trusted his brother, and he betrayed me in a way I can never forgive him. I wish I was being dramatic, and that everyone was right about how he made a mistake. They come up with excuses just because he's blind, but that's besides the point. Why can't they understand that I'm the victim? He hurt me. I feel like I'm drowning. I don't care if he's blind. He took something from me that he should have never taken. I can't ever trust another person again, because I'm afraid they will do the same. Sometimes I fantasize about getting in my car and leaving. I just want to drive as far away as possible and start a new life. Every time I think I get over it, it's as if these feelings slap me in the face 10x harder. All my hobbies disgust me now. I'm hurt and miserable. I wish my husband would understand this. Update. I didn't really expect many people to comment, but thank you to everyone who offered helpful advice. It felt good to have my feelings validated. I saw a handful of comments saying this was fake, and unfortunately, it's not. This really happened to me, and I came here to vent. Anyway, I waited until my husband was in a good mood, and I talked to him. I told him, please don't interrupt me and hear me out. It was as if a weight lifted off my shoulder. I really expressed how I felt without fear. My husband apologized for making me feel the way he did. Apparently, he's been talking to his therapist about the situation, and he's been looking for housing for his brother. His therapist told him if he kicked him out, he could get arrested because that's abuse since he's considered disabled. He found housing for his brother, but it won't be ready until January. He said this place is for low-income people, and after that, his brother will have to basically set everything up in the state so someone can help him with his groceries and things like that. He said that as soon as he gets the phone call, he will be out of our lives for good. He also said that he's been scared to talk to me because he feels like every time we talk, he always says the wrong thing. I told him I didn't believe him and to show me the proof. He showed me all the emails from the property manager and everything. I'm feeling hopeful, but I am skeptical. We just bought this house two months ago, so I can't leave just yet. Update 2. I was hesitant to set up a meeting with a divorce attorney, but it's on Monday. We talked about the steps we can take and how I can file a restraining order on his brother if I want to. I'm planning on going to the station with my attorney on Monday and seeing what they say. I'm also planning on heading back home tonight. I chose me. Thank you so much to everyone who commented. It's so mind-blowing to think so many took time out of their day to truly support me. I'm a stranger, yet you gave me so much good advice. I'm so happy. I really cried reading some of these comments. I was lacking support, and I found it here. I'm forever grateful. I did tell my husband I needed some fresh air. Therefore, I'm going back home to New York. He was sad, but I really don't care. The stick has been broken, and no amount of duct tape can repair it. Again, thank you so much to everyone. Also, to everyone who commented on funny things, thank you. I really needed that laugh. I'll update soon. Comments. Redditor. What'd he do? OP. He stole 16 pairs of my thongs and hid them in his pillow. We only found out when his bed collapsed in the middle of the night. He also stole some of my other personal items. Redditor. And he knew how to find all of this stuff. How exactly? Of course Touch will tell him it's a thong, but... He knows where you keep them. And what other personal items? OP. He admitted to going in my dresser while my husband and I were at work. He searched through my dresser for the thongs. He found my adult items in a bag I kept on the side of my dresser. I had another bag on top of it. He was just searching away, like he was at the store. I kept telling my husband my thongs were missing, but honestly, we thought they were between the washer and dryer since they always fall between them. It turns out he was switching them while we were out of the house. Redditor. That's awful. And your husband has told you his stance. What you have to decide is if you want to stay with someone who doesn't stand up for you. On a side note, how many pairs of underwear do you have without noticing 16 missing items? I knew they were missing, but I literally thought they were just stuck between the washer and dryer. On the side because they're always getting stuck there when I put the laundry on top of the dryer. I always ask my husband to move the washer and dryer so I can get them. The only thing is that he was switching them out every so often. So if I realized certain pairs were gone by the time I did my laundry again, I'd find them in the basket. I guess because I don't put my laundry away the same day I do laundry. That was the perfect time for him to put them back and get some more. 
I always buy myself new thongs every month, so it didn't really make a dent, except when I noticed my favorite pairs were gone. Redditor. Oh honey, I can only imagine how violative that is. My Phil used my intimate toys when he stayed at my home, and I still have issues seeing him or being in my own bedroom. Your husband made his choice. He doesn't care that his brother violated you. Which is what he did. You deserve better. He took your intimate items and used them for self-gratification. And this mindset his family has is probably why it's escalated this far. Have there been any other red flags? OP. No, I never saw any red flags prior to this. However, looking back, I should have looked deeper when I found three of my bras in his room. I found them and questioned him, but they were blended into his clothes. He had just gotten out of the dryer, so I believed him when he said, I didn't know they were there, I'm blind. I feel so stupid for believing him now. Redditor, I think if he is choosing him over you, when he is definitely in the wrong, then that's a problem. Also, why is he in your house while you guys are at work? I never leave anyone in my house while I'm not home. I don't care who they are. Family or not. And if he lives with you, that's also a problem. I would reevaluate my life choices honestly. OP. Because he's blind. He refuses to make friends or do anything. He stays in his room, watching YouTube videos all day. We tried multiple times prior to this to help him find some hobbies or something to do. But he uses his being blind as an excuse for why he can't do anything. I even told him they have a place where people who can't see well can go and make friends, but that wasn't good enough for him. Redditor, is he really blind? And did he steal the dirty pants? And sniff them? Gosh, this is awful. I'm so sorry. OP, yes, he is really blind. I don't know if they were clean or not because the second my husband handed them to me, I threw them away. I was so scared to check, because then it would be worse. I felt so disgusted. Some more comments from OP. 1. I'm definitely getting my ducks in a row. We just bought this house two months ago. But I don't even want to stay here anymore. I have a meeting with a divorce attorney on Monday. I'm hopeful. 2. That would be so satisfying. I have a meeting with a lawyer on Monday. I'm looking for a therapist, but with the holidays, the office is closed. I'm leaving both of them in 2022. 3. Sorry for the confusion. The second update is after we talked about it. I guess it's kind of hard to look the man I married in the eyes and continuously tell him, I love you, all while knowing he still defended his brother and gave me the same excuse as everyone else. He's blind, he didn't know what he was doing. Even if he is looking for housing, I don't think I can trust him again. It hurt more knowing he would rather make excuses for his brother than defend me. He can say sorry, but his actions speak otherwise. I tried to forgive him after our conversation, but I couldn't. I would never treat him this way if a family member did this to him. He claims his brother isn't a predator, and he just has unmet needs. I can't be with him anymore. Second story. Wife's friend confessed about my wife cheating 14 years ago, and my wife downplayed it, saying it didn't matter as it was 14 years ago. She then had a mental breakdown after I filed for divorce. My 35mm married to my wife 37F for 11 years and together for 14. We have a beautiful 7-year-old daughter. And our marriage has been great without any major problems until last year. Last year, I learned that my wife cheated on me before our marriage. One of her friends became religious and confessed her actions to me, which made me confront my wife. She was shocked that I learned about it, and apologized profusely for her actions. However, she said it's not something important now because we have been going strong and have a family together. She told me I should come to terms with it since it happened four months into being exclusive and she was a stupid girl out of college back then. My mind told me the same. It happened 14 years ago, and we are happy right now. I decided to forgive her and continue our usual lives. The reality was not that great. My mental health took a big hit. I realized it's not something that happened 14 years ago for me. The cheating happened for me when my wife confirmed it. I was less confident and could not have sex with my wife. I just could not get an erection for her. This turned into feeling disgusted about being around her. I even took a DNA and STD test secretly. Thankfully, our daughter is mine, and I am clear of STDs. Then a year of intense individual therapy started for me. I realized I needed to change somehow. I was not the same person I used to be. I also communicated my feelings to my wife, and after pushing a bit, we started going through couples counseling too. However, at the end of everything, I decided to proceed with divorce. Here are my reasonings. She not only cheated back then, but she also lied to me for 14 years. She did not confess the action herself. Even though she apologized, 
She dismissed the fact by saying it's not important anymore. Young me was robbed of having a choice. Cheating was, and still is one of the biggest deal breakers for me. If I had known it back then, I would have broken it off. I am happy with my life, and I am glad that our daughter came into the world. She is the light that shines the brightest for me. One of the biggest reasons I keep living is that I was robbed of a choice back then. I see and MC could not understand our problems or my feelings towards her. It also started affecting family life, which could affect our daughter. I think our daughter would be better off having us as co-parents instead of living in a broken family environment where consistent arguments are present. SX life is basically dead for me. We do have SX, but I feel like those women in films or series who just lay and look at the ceiling, waiting for it to be over. The only difference is that I am a man. I do not even want non sexual gestures anymore. Last week, I had a sit down with my wife and explained everything I wrote here in detail, including my feelings, reasonings, and some other private things. I have been talking to a lawyer for the last month, and the papers are almost finalized. 50 50 custody, 50 50 asset sharing, and as amicable as possible. I explained everything thoroughly and clearly to her. She freaked out and had a panic attack. We spent the night at the ER. She is begging me to reconsider and not throw away 14 years. However, even though I would like to stay, it will result in us being roommates and a broken family environment for our daughter. Am I in the wrong here? Comments. KGBA. This isn't about being an RC hole or not. You're not able to deal with something, and it has changed your view of someone. Katma Katma. That's the thing. OP has tried everything they can to make it work. He didn't throw his hands up and walk out. He tried. He really tried. But you can't make yourself have emotions you don't have. Nor can you let go of what you're currently feeling. There's no right or wrong here. Wilt. This isn't an arsy hole or not question. You aren't able to love her the way you did before. You no longer trust her. Your relationship is dysfunctional. Therapy didn't help. Calling you or her after all. She's the cheater and arsy hole will solve absolutely nothing. All you can do now is make the separation as smooth as possible for your daughter. J. Beaker. Someone else wrote this in a thread months ago, and I still remember it. The affair happened 14 years ago for you. It just happened for me. She's had 14 years to process and lie about it, and then to just let it go. For OP, this just happened. He's still dealing with all of it. And not just the affair, but the 14 years of lying by omission too. It's brand new to him. Also, OP NTA. OP. It happened on a girl's trip. They went together. It was confirmed by my wife. Her friend told me she could not hold the secret of a sin anymore and decided to confess. About four months into being an exclusive couple girlfriend and boyfriend. So, it's not before being a boyfriend or girlfriend. The paper is basically in agreement with blank sections, including custody, asset sharing, and other marital things. I proposed my side to her, and she is free to consult with a lawyer to propose her side. Both sides meet and come to an agreement. Then this agreement is proposed to a family court in the case of amicable divorce to get an appointment for the court case. I let her know beforehand that I was considering divorce and getting the draft agreement ready, so she should also consult with a lawyer. A square spare 8723. How's your wife dealing with all of this? Has the anger presented itself yet? Or is she still in denial? OP. She has barely eaten since the ER visit and is still in denial. Judgment. NTA. Update. One day later. Firstly, I want to thank everyone for their ideas and input about my situation. Some people reached out to me on Reddit chat to state their opinions, and we had long talks. They have been incredibly helpful, and I want to thank them especially. Some people asked if we went to counseling together. Yes, we have been visiting a counselor for over a year now on top of my individual therapy. I understand that blowing up a marriage for something that happened 14 years ago is not logical. However, my feelings towards my wife got even worse after counseling and therapy. It started with not being able to trust her. Then I converted to not wanting SX. Then not wanting non sexual gestures. And finally, I am not even comfortable being in the same space as her. We have been less than roommates in the last couple of months. I do not hate or resent her, but I just cannot shake off the feelings. I would say I forgave her. But it's not about forgiving anymore when there are no feelings or love. I do not want my daughter to grow up in such an environment. I know how hurtful it can be. I experienced a similar situation with my parents, only the genders were reversed. Living in such an environment breaks you as a child or teen. I would have much preferred if my mother just divorced my dad instead of staying for my sake. This being said, I had a long talk with my wife this morning. She has not been eating much since visiting the ER, 
and I am concerned for her well-being and safety. Some Redditors who reached out suggested considering separation before proceeding with the divorce and seeing if my feelings would change. That is very logical, actually. I proposed this idea to my wife, and she was happy to hear it. I have an upcoming business trip to the Netherlands next week, and I am planning to extend my stay and stay with my sister once I am back. My wife abruptly suggested a one-sided open marriage, and I can do what I want on that business trip if it'll save the relationship, make us even, and change my feelings. I rejected it, because it has nothing to do with that. Even if it changed something for me, it would devastate her knowing I cheated on her in the future. It's not something easy to get over, and it's not an easy decision. That is all the update. We'll try separation for a while, and depending on the result, I'll make my decision. Thank you for all the help and opinions. Comments. Horizons 190. It's telling how quickly, just because you stood up for yourself, she went from telling, and what feels like dictating to sudden panic attacks and begging instead. Would it have been different if she had gone straight to begging and contrition earlier? Hmm. Will you jack that off? Avoid falling for her self-abuse charade, which is intended to make you feel sorry for her. It's an attempt at manipulation. Horizons 190. I understand that blowing up a marriage for something that happened 14 years ago is not logical. It is absolutely logical. As you said yourself, it didn't happen 14 years ago. The lies continued up to the present day. Update. One month later. I have a short update about the situation. I got back from the trip and decided to divorce my wife in the end. The last straw was when my daughter told me. I looked more lively and happier after I came back. I realized I am better off without my wife and just co-parenting our daughter with her. I still feel incredibly uncomfortable around my wife. My wife did not take the news well and is going down a spiral. I called Mill and Phil to have them take care of her. She caused some problems. She sent threatening messages to her friend, who told me about the cheating. I had to beg her not to sue my wife, as I want my daughter to have a mother present in her life. Though she'll probably be taken to the mental ward, she is not well. The last time I saw her, I felt scared looking into her eyes. Our daughter is with me now, and we've started the divorce process. My lawyer told me that if my wife is taken to a mental hospital, there is a good chance that I can get better than 50-50 custody. One should be happy to hear that, but I am just devastated by how it will affect our daughter. Many Redditors said in the comments that dating life after your 30s as a man is not good, and I'll probably be forever alone as no one will want me. The first thing is, I do not care. Our daughter is my first priority, and dating is the last thing I have in mind right now. The second thing is that I am confident in myself with regard to finding friends and a partner. I think this sums up my update. I will be back, maybe in a year, considering how long the divorce process takes when it's not amicable. Thank you. Comments. Tricky Stock 17248. I'm going to say it. A man in his 30s who takes care of his look and looks healthy sometimes is way more attractive than any boy in his 20s who's just beginning to understand how life works. I hope it works for you. I've come from a family where my mom cheated on my dad with his brother, and then he cheated back with her cousin. Believe me, no child deserves to be raised in a family like that. Your daughter is better off with only one calm parent than with two belligerent parents who decided to stay together for the sake of kids. Her life won't end by now. I would leave my husband too if I found out he cheated on me when we were just beginning as a couple. Cheating has no expiration date. I hope you get better and find happiness. Third story. I have been dating my biological brother for the past six years, and he didn't know it yet. I am 30, and my brother is 32. I'm just going to call him my boyfriend for the majority of the time while I type this. I feel weird about this. I was adopted as a baby, but I didn't know that I was adopted until I was in high school. It didn't feel betrayed or care much. I love my parents, and my parents love me. Who cares if they aren't my real parents? My boyfriend was also adopted, and when we met, it was one of the things we sort of bonded over. We both didn't learn we were adopted until high school, and we both were lucky and had good families. We weren't passed around from foster home to foster home. Our relationship was and still is great. We understood each other very well. We were attracted to each other quickly. I've never met someone and felt immediate attraction and familiarity. Now I know that the comfort and familiarity are because he's my brother. Not my half-brother. He is my full brother. We've done everything a couple that has been together for six years could do. We've said we love each other, we've had SX, we've celebrated anniversaries, and we've met each other's families. I'm just glad we both agreed early on that we don't want to have kids, so that has never happened. 
I don't want to deal with the health risks of having to raise a child and let them know that their parents are siblings. I discovered it when we did the DNA test thing to see our ancestry and what exactly we are. I ordered two for us. We spit in the tube and sent it out. It took like a month for the results to come back, and I was excited to see what we were. But before I could even get to that, I saw that we were siblings. I was shocked, to say the least. I only just found out this information, and I haven't told my boyfriend. I'm really hoping they made a mistake, but things are kind of starting to make sense to me now. We always get the, you guys look so alike, or, he's the male version of you. Long before this test, we'd always been compared. We always just laughed it off. But I have spent the morning looking at pictures of us together and realizing that we really do look so alike. It's freaking me out, and I don't know what I should do. I still love my boyfriend or brother, and we have been together for six years. We have a house together and a very comfortable life. I'm hoping that this test is wrong and we'll do a real test soon, but I'm panicking. I still see him as the love of my life. Relevant comments. Wow, that's quite a bombshell to find out. Well, step one is to tell your boyfriend, now since he is currently unaware. And this is something he needs to know is going on. Then get more testing done to confirm the results. Past that, it's up to the two of you. Definitely no kids, so it's good the two of you already made that choice. And if you decide to stay together, I'd recommend not telling anyone that you're biological siblings. OP. I want us both to get a real test. I wish I never decided to do this F. You need to tell him. This affects his life just like yours. You can't keep this important information from him. It's not fair to keep it from him. OP. What if the test is wrong? You still have to tell him so he can make up his own mind. It isn't fair to him. If you want to redo the test, and he agrees, then do it. But you can't take his options away, just because you feel how you feel. OP. I'm so afraid he'll just break up with me. He needs to know, for both of your sakes, at the end of the day. It's quite the bombshell to find something like this out but the best thing to do is inform him. Maybe he would want to get a proper test done. At least you have something more clear to go on. I am not sure how accurate these home DNA tests are, but it definitely needs to be done again, to be sure. I am so sorry that this is happening to you. Good luck, OP. I know I don't plan on keeping it from him. Anyone see that story about the fertility doctor who had been using his own sperms to inseminate hundreds of patients? Kids better date someone from the next state over. OP. He grew up a state away. The universe hates me. With this response, I almost wonder if it was a false result. It seems so astronomically unlikely. You might be okay, and your mind may be convincing you that he's your brother when you look at photos of each other. OP. I'm hoping that is the case. This is why I could never date someone my own age or older. My father was a notorious skirt chaser, and God only knows how many half-siblings I have out there. Dating is scary when there is a chance you could end up dating a relative. There is zero chance my missus is related to me in any way. Question. Did you both spit into the same tube? I'd call the company you used to ask if there was a chance they made an error. I had this fear as well, but I guess the universe hates me. And no, we use two tubes. As someone who is also adopted, this has always been a huge fear for me. I think, if nothing else, you need to tell him. It's what you would want if they found out. They deserve to know the truth. From there. I think you both should sit down and really discuss what the next step is. Just because you may want to stay in the relationship, knowing he is your brother doesn't mean he would. And that's not fair to him. He should deserve the same amount of respect and knowledge that you do, especially if you love him. I wish you both the best. I really feel for you both in this situation. OP. I also had this fear, and it came true for me. I'm glad I'm not the only adopted person who is like, what if I'm related to this hookup? I suppose there could be some cross-contamination. Did you guys kiss or make out for a reasonably short time before the test? While possible, it just seems so unlikely. OP, maybe. I want to do a real test soon. I hope this is a big mistake. Edit on the original post. I posted this the other day, but since then I showed him the results, and he realized that we're siblings. He doesn't want to freak out or make any big decisions until we get a real test somewhere. But I can tell he is freaked out and it was odd laying in bed next to him. OP posted an update on R off my chest. However, it was removed. I have recovered it here with the Wayback Machine. Update. I posted my original post about a year ago, and after a month or so, I just never really checked this account. Well, I was scrolling through TikTok the other day and saw my post read out loud on there, and it really was shocking. The video I saw was people on a stage reading it, 
and the crowd was shocked and disgusted, as if we grew up together and chose this. If when we met, I knew he was my brother, I would not have gotten along with him. Anyway, everyone is begging for an update. To make a long story short, my update is that we are still together and have been together. Rather than get a real DNA test done at a doctor, we just left it at that. We read that those ancestry tests are pretty accurate, and it was interesting to learn about other relatives we have. Because your ancestry links you to other people who have taken the test and shared your DNA, something that was questioned a lot was, why would you two randomly both take DNA tests? And we are both adopted. We want to know who we are. Everyone else growing up could say, my family is Irish, my family comes from Germany, or my great-great-grandmother used to do this. We have none of that. We privated our ancestry and decided not to get another test because there were just more people involved. I didn't even have to tell him when the news broke. We both had login information for our ancestry, so he saw it himself. It was a lot to get over and talk about. I have to admit that it was really hard to look at him that way for a while. We slept in separate places. For a while, I felt weird around him. But we were six years in by that time, and I still loved him and still do love him. My weirdness was different from how I feel with my actual brothers. I consider the kids of my adopted parents to be my actual brothers. If I were to date one of them, I would feel odd because I grew up with them. With my boyfriend or brother, it was just a crazy, what are the odds, feeling. And looking at him, seeing myself, and seeing our parents that we never knew. We talked about it, and we have decided to just stay together. We don't want kids, and no one else knows, so who are we hurting? I don't care about all the comments that call us disgusting. I don't see him as a brother. I don't find the fact that he is my biological brother hot or exciting. I just see him as the man I love. We have been able to joke and find humor in it within ourselves. My boyfriend joked. We could have saved money on the ancestry and just sent one test in. Back when Game of Thrones was really popular before that terrible ending, we went to a Halloween party and I dressed as Cersei. Recently he was like, I should have dressed like James. This may seem weird or off-putting to people reading it, but it is how we find levity in it all. Another misconception I kept seeing was that we met in high school. We met when I was 20. We had a really normal relationship. It went from friends to best friends to a couple. He is honestly, the love of my life. We've been together for seven years now, and I've never gotten tired of him. I've never felt like I wanted to be apart from him. Even during the big discovery, I missed sharing a bed with him. I've never felt more at home and comfortable with a person, and it has nothing to do with him being my brother. No one will know. We aren't having children. We still do everything we did as a couple before finding out. I don't see him as my brother. I would actually feel gross if I slept with my real siblings. Relevant comments. In response to a now-deleted comment. OP. We found it after six years in. We have a house together. And we are in love. You don't just turn off love. I would actually feel gross if I slept with my real siblings. Myth, he is your real sibling, like TF. OP. I don't see him as my brother. I see my family, who adopted me, as my family. So their kids are my brothers, and there would be Ike for that. We were together for six years without knowing we were related. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.